Now, everybody knows what this weekend is, right? It's Memorial Day weekend. It's the unofficial start of the summer. But before I get into the heart of my sermon, I want to give you some facts about Memorial Day. It was started by Union General John A. Logan, who founded it on May 31st, 1868. So today is actually Memorial Day. Um, the purpose he did for this is to remember of those who died in defense of their country during the Civil War. It wasn't originally called Memorial Day. It was called Decoration Day because they decorated the graves of those soldiers who have died. And one of the earliest known celebration of this was from newly freed slaves who were happy to be free and wanted to remember those men who died for them to give them the freedom. It was an unofficial holiday until 1971 when it was moved to the final Monday in May as a celebration. At first, it was celebrating of those who lost their lives in a civil war. But when World War I came around, they changed that to honor all who had lost their lives battling for our freedoms. Because these men and women who died gave us a lot of freedoms here in America. Freedom to be thinking independently. Freedom to vote. Freedom to go to church. We can argue that some of these freedoms have been taken away from us, but that's not what Memorial Day is about. It's about honoring and remembering those who gave us those freedoms. We as human beings are forgetful people. Someone might ask you what you had for breakfast this morning. We forget, even during that short period of time, what we ate for breakfast. During special events like weddings and graduations, we hire photographers to take photos so that we can remember those events. I'm going to share two events from my wedding, mine and Beth's wedding, that when I look back at the pictures we had our photographer take and reminds me of what those things were. The first picture, as you can see up behind me, is this was during what we call first looks. I was waiting to see what my bride was going to look like in her wedding dress. I haven't seen her since the night before, and I didn't see her in her wedding dress. So I'm on my phone typing on Facebook, waiting to see what my bride looks like. And as I'm doing that, this picture reminds me, that's exactly what I was doing. And you can see her in the background. The second event I like to remember is could have changed our reception greatly. If you look on the picture on the left and the one on the right, they were taken right in between an event where as I was walking from taking the first picture on the left, there's a little lip and I stepped in this sinkhole that went up to here on my legs. My shoe was totally covered. My socks, my pants were pulled, got pulled up. God was protecting me from even falling during that. If I would have fallen, we probably would have had to call an ambulance and the reception would have been, we would say, ruined. But God protected me. And looking at this photo, it reminds me of that. So the Bible also gives us pictures of many remembrance in it. God gives us a remembrance how, because we are forgetful people. He wants us to remember what he has did for us. The first event God commanded people to remember was the Passover. This is an event in when the nation of Israel was in slavery for 400 years in Egypt. And God gave them a series of things to do to remember that event, because God wanted them to remember that they were enslaved, that they were saved from that enslavery by God. Why do you think God did that? Because we are forgetful people. We need reminders. God gave them the reminder of Passover and how to celebrate it so that they remember. Now, 
when they're, after they were wandering in the desert, they came to Mount Sinai. God gave them a command so that they will know something. And you shall set bread of the presence on the table before me regularly. You may wonder what the bread of presence, the presence is. It's also called the show bread. They, God wanted the nation of Israel to place this every Sabbath in the most holy as a remembrance of what God did for the nation of Israel, for how he was, and take care of each and every one of the tribes. God wanted us to remember because we are forgetful people. God also gave a remembrance to the nation of Israel when they crossed over the river. God, into the promised land that God has provided for them. The Lord commanded Joshua to have people pick up 12 stones from the middle of the Jordan River to remind the people of that God brought them into the promised land. Joshua said to the nation of Israel, when your children ask you, ask their fathers in the time to come, what do these stones mean? Then you shall let your children know. Israel passed over the Jordan on dry ground. For the Lord, your God, dried up the waters on the, of the Jordan and f until you pass over. As the Lord God did to the Red Sea, which he dried up for us until we passed over. So all the people of the earth may know the hand of the Lord is mighty, that he may fear the Lord your God forever. God, the nation of Israel, wanted to remember this. There was two and a half tribes that did not go into the promised land. They stayed on the other side of the Jordan. But when they conquered the promised land, they went back. They set up their own 12 stones as a remembrance that they are part of the nation of Israel. Why did God give this to us? Give the nation of Israel this? Because they are a forgetful people, and we are a forgetful people. In 1 Samuel 7.12, it says, Then Samuel took a stone and set it up between Mizbah and Shen, and called it Ebenezer. For he said, Till now the Lord has helped us. Samuel wanted to commemorate God's helping the nation of Israel and the, overcome the Palestines. And Samuel set up this reminder for what God did. He wanted people to remember how great God was helping them defeat the Philistines. He did this because people are forgetful. We actually did something like this in our house, at our house. Um, shortly after we got married, I built a rock garden in, in front of our porch. I got rocks from Home Depot. It looked nice. But everywhere we went that were memorable to us, we picked up a stone and we put it in this garden in front of our house. So when we're sitting on our porch and we remember, we see that stone. Oh, the Lord had a wonderful time up in Boston. Oh, that stone. That's when we found this old military base that they were filming a TV series in. It was our way of remembering because I speak for myself here and I might get in trouble for this. Also, Beth, we are forgetful people. We need those Ebenezer stones to remember how the Lord took us or the events that we had that was enjoyable. Now, these Ebenezer stones was not, and reminders are not just in the Old Testament. It's throughout the New Testament as well because we are forgetful people and God and the disciples who wrote the New Testament wanted us to remember that. The Apostle John wrote in his first epistle about how we need to abide in God when he wrote, so we come to know and to believe in the love of God for us. God's love and whatever abides in love and God abides in him. When we remember what God did, his love, we abide in him. And we do need those reminders in our lives, whether it's 
daily Bible reading, whether it's talking to other believers. Titus also wanted us to remember, in hope is eternal life, which God has never lies promised before the ages began. God promised this to Adam and Eve about eternal life. And God set up reminders for them and their descendants, which is everybody in this room is a descendant of Adam and Eve. He wants us to remind ourselves how good he is and how he has eternal life for us. The Apostle Paul, when writing to the Romans, told them to remember, once you were slave to sin, but now wholeheartedly obey this teaching he has given you. Now you are free from your slavery and you have become slaves to righteous living because the weakness of the human nature. I use the illustration of slavery to help you understand this. Previously, you let yourself be slaves to impurity, lawlessness, whatever deeper in sin. Now you must give yourself to be slaves of righteous living so that you may be holy. If we don't remember what God has done, we don't set up those reminders for us, we will be slaves to our past. God doesn't want that. He wants us to remember what he did. He wants to remember the freedom he has given us for that. That's why in the book of Revelations, when Jesus was talking to the 12 churches, he told them to remember what he has done for those churches. In the church of Ephesus in Revelation 2, he gives a very strong warning to them about remembering. He said, remember, therefore, where you have fallen, repent and do the works you did first. If not, I will come to you and remove your lampstand from its place unless you repent. That is a very important thing. If we don't remember what the Lord has done for us and we don't repent from our forgetfulness, God is going to take away our lampstand. And that is scary. I don't know about you, but that scares me. I know I could tell, as Pastor Greg mentioned earlier, that there was four of us who went down to Newark to minister to homeless people. And there's one lady that I did not remember her name until yesterday, but I remember she was so excited to get a social security card. And when she came in and reminded me of that, I remember everything. And now, next time I go, I got to ask her, did she get her ID like she was going to? She said that she's getting in three days from yesterday. And it was such a joy to remember how God is using people to impact lives. And God wants us to remember his love for us as we remember what we do for others. There is another event that is celebrated that helps us remind us what God has done. It's a simple thing. We usually celebrate it once a month. It's called the Lord's Supper or the Lord's Table. This is a time that God wanted us to remember to do, to remember that he died on the cross for our sins. He paid the price for us so that we do not have to keep sacrificing animals 